Hello and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be reviewing Antec's latest mid-tower, the DF700 Flux. And hopefully you've seen the full step-by-step -step build guide I've put together in this case. If you haven't, you'll find a link to it in the description. So if you're not familiar with Antec's Flux lineup, Flux stands for Flow Luxury. And I think this case has a lot of both of those features. I think the most distinctive feature of this case is the mesh front panel. And that's a fairly common thing at the moment, but Antec have made this case stand out by going for a wave-like pattern to the front mesh. There's also an aluminium plate on the front with the Antec logo. And when you combine this with the three RGB fans at the front, shining light over the rippled mesh pattern, it gives a really great effect. The case has two fairly standard looking side panels, one in glass and one in steel. They're both held on with two captive thumb screws at the back and once these have been loosened, the panels can simply be slid backwards and lifted away. When you remove the front glass panel, you will notice that it's a fairly solid panel and actually the tempered glass is four millimeters thick. It also has only a very light tint to it, so there's no problem seeing anything inside the case. The rear steel panel has perforations down at the bottom of it and when you combine this with intake fans on top of the power supply shroud, this should give great cooling for the GPU. And this is a feature that other cases in the Antex Flux lineup share. You'll find a magnetic dust filter over this cutout in the side panel. As well, you'll find a magnetic dust filter on the top of the case and a tray-like dust filter at the bottom of the case. Looking at the front I.O., we've got a power button, we've got a separate headphone and microphone jack, We've got two USB 3.0 Type-A ports. There's a hard drive and power LED. And we've also got an additional LED button which lets you change the lighting of anything connected up to the RGB hub at the back of the case. And although this may sound like a small feature, I really like the way Antec have dealt with the power LED and hard drive LED. It's very small light, it's on the top of the case, so it's out of your way, but you can actually look at it if you need to see it. Other cases that have this on the front and the hard drive indicator is flashing away all the time. I find very distracting and quite often I don't plug that cable in. The only things missing from the case are a reset button, but the LED button has replaced that and there's no front panel type C connector. Although in a case of this price with so many other options, this wouldn't necessarily be something I would expect. You'll have no problem fitting a lot of hardware into this case. It supports motherboards up to ATX. You'll be able to fit CPU killers up to a maximum height of 175 millimeters, power supplies up to a maximum length of 205 millimeters, and the maximum GPU length supported is 405 millimeters. The case comes with five fans included, three of which have ARGB, and these are pre-mounted at the front. At the rear of the case, you've got a standard 120 millimeter black fan without any ARGB, and in the accessory box, you've got a reverse flow fan which is designed to be used on top of the power supply shroud as an additional intake. So if you look closely at the fan, you'll notice the fan blades have been reversed, allowing the fan to be installed with the front facing up into the case, but it's still being an intake. So this should give you the benefits of improved looks and also reduce noise as the fan blades are further away from the bottom of the case. And I think this is a great feature and I hope it's something that other fan manufacturers will look at and start to introduce as well. So although the case comes with five case fans, it can actually support up to a maximum of nine case fans. Again, for radiator support, you're also spoilt in this case. You can fit both a 360 millimeter radiator or a 280 millimeter radiator at the front or on top, while at the rear, you can fit a 120 millimeter radiator. We've got a cutout at the front of the case, allowing you to mount a radiator and an additional set of fans behind the pre-mounted fans at the front of the case. Antec recommend that the combined thickness of the radiator and the fans should be less than 55 millimeters. If you're not planning on using this cutout, there's no optional cover for it. Moving to the rear of the case, we can see there's cutouts in all the right places, although unfortunately there's no rubber grommets over them. Although it is nice to see that there's Velcro cable straps included. The case also has a built-in PWM fan hub and ARGB controller. So the hub has six three-pin fan connectors and also six three-pin 5-volt addressable ARGB connectors. 
and you'll find the cases for pre-installed fans already connected up to these. What's nice to see is the fan hub offers PWM motherboard control of all the fans plugged into the fan hub. And if you go ahead and plug in the RGB connector coming from the hub to your motherboard, you're going to be able to use your motherboard's RGB software to control the lighting of anything plugged into the hub. If your motherboard doesn't have an ARGB connector, that's not a problem because as we've mentioned, there's an LED button on the top of the case which you can press to cycle through the different effects. To enable motherboard control, all you do is hold this button in for two seconds and that will allow your motherboard software to control the lighting. Again, this case has a lot of drive mounting locations. Over to the right hand side, we've got two removable dedicated two and a half inch drive mounts. You can also mount a two and a half inch drive on the rear of the case over to the left hand side, as well as mounting a three and a half inch drive in a similar location. Down at the bottom of the case, we've got a hard drive cage where you can mount an additional two three and a half inch drives. Pricing wise, the case is currently on sale in the UK for 65 pounds, which sounds like a real bargain given the amount of features this case has. So in case you haven't seen my build guide, I'll give you a quick recap on the hardware. So we had a Ryzen 5 5600X being cooled by the Lian Lee Galahad 360mm AIO up at the top set to exhaust. For the graphics card, we had the 3060Ti. We had the original three case fans at the front of the case set to intake. We had the Lian Lee Bora digital fans, one at the rear set to exhaust and two at the bottom on top of the power supply shroud set to intake. The Lian Lee fans were plugged into the motherboard, while the three fans at the front of the case were plugged into the fan hub. So as you can see, the PC performed really well in terms of temperatures, both at idle and also when the PC was stressed during gaming or an IDA64 stability test. And in particular, I want to flag up the maximum CPU temperature during the IDA64 stability test of 61 degrees and the maximum GPU temperature of 64 degrees. And these were really good. Looking at the noise levels, these weren't so good and particularly the idle noise levels were particularly high at 43 decibels. And there's quite a small gap between the idle noise of 43 decibels and the noise level when the PC was being stressed of 51 decibels. And to put things into context, the quietest PC I've built had an idle noise level of 30 decibels, reaching 40 decibels under full load. And as we can see here, this PC was actually louder at idle than that PC was under full load. So I wanted to go ahead and test out a few different thermal configurations because certainly we had excellent temperatures, but a bit too much noise. So the first thing you want to think about doing is can we get rid of any of the fans? because it seems like we've got enough cooling and having more fans than what we need is only going to bring more noise. So the first thing I did was I removed the two intake fans on top of the power supply shroud, leaving everything else the same. Doing that, the CPU idled one degree hotter, but there was no difference to the GPU temperatures at idle. The results under load were actually quite surprising. The CPU actually was one degree cooler under load, while the GPU was three degrees cooler without those bottom intake fans. As you would expect, removing two of the fans at the noise levels came down by three decibels, both at idle and under load. So looking at those results, it seemed that the two fans at the bottom were actually hurting our PC rather than helping it, both in terms of noise and in terms of temperatures. But before I could say don't install any fans down the bottom, we needed to test the reverse fan that Antec had shipped with the case. So on top of the power supply shroud, you've got two fan mounting locations, and I went ahead and installed the reverse fan over to the right hand side. And this is where Antec recommends you install it, because down beneath this, you've got plenty of space. Over to the left hand side, you're pretty close to the power supply itself. So with the reverse fan installed at the bottom, there was no difference to the CPU temperatures, both at idle and under load. The GPU idled one degree cooler, while under load, it was one degree hotter. Having the reverse fan installed, there was one decibel of extra noise at idle, and there was no difference to the noise levels under load. So analyzing these results, the reverse fan that Antec included with the case seems to be of fairly good quality, particularly when we look at the noise levels. It adds only a tiny increase in noise levels and certainly much less than the Lee and Lee case fans that I had decided to go with. The problem is when we look at the temperatures, it makes no significant difference. 
And when you factor in, it adds a little bit of extra noise. And I also think it adversely affects the look of the build. I like symmetry in a build and having just one fan installed at the bottom did not look at all well to me and I think it looked much better without any fans installed. So putting all this together, my recommendation would be to leave the fan mounting slots at the bottom of the case empty. The next thing I wanted to do was to test the quality of the rear stock fan that Antec include with the case. So what I did, I replaced the only remaining Lian Li Bora digital fan at the back of the case with the original Antec fan. Because Antec shipped this case with this case fan installed in the fan hub at the back, I plugged it into the fan hub rather than installing it in the motherboard. So the Antec fan installed at the rear, all our CPU and GPU temperatures came down by one degree, both at idle and under load. Looking at the noise levels, at idle, the noise levels increased by two decibels with the stock fan, while under load, there was no difference to the noise levels. So it seems that the stock rear case fan provided by Antec does a fairly good job. The only slight confounding factor was that I actually plugged this case fan into the fan hub rather than directly into the motherboard, and we would get a better like-by-like -like comparison if I had plugged it into the motherboard. At the time of doing the tests, the reason I did this test was I was keen to test the case as it chips with the fan plugged into the fan hub, but it's only now when I'm sitting down analyzing the results I wish I'd done it the other way around. The next thing that I want to look at was, was our fan hub causing excessive noise? And I was fairly suspicious that it was, because remember when I was doing the original build and I had all our Lian Li case fans plugged into the fan hub, the PC was incredibly noisy. When I moved those three fans over to the motherboard, the noise level came down by a whopping nine decibels. But our PC was still a little bit too noisy for my liking. So what I did, compared to our last configuration, where all the fans were plugged into the fan hub, I moved all the fans to the motherboard and ran them on standard fan curves in DC mode. So first of all, looking at the temperatures at idle, both the CPU and GPU temperatures increased by one degree. While under load, the CPU temperature came up by one degree and there was no difference to the GPU temperatures. Looking at the noise levels at idle, having the fans plugged into the motherboard brought the noise levels down by five decibels. While under load, the noise levels came down by two decibels by having the fans plugged into the motherboard rather than the fan hub. So what this tells me is the fan hub is running the fans at a much higher speed than what the fan curves are doing in the motherboard bias. And this higher fan speed is only giving you very minor benefits in terms of temperatures, but it's causing a massive problem in terms of noise. So my recommendation, if you are gonna get this case, I would not plug the fans into the fan hub. I would plug them into your motherboard. So now we come on to what I liked and what I didn't like about this case. And I think the first thing I liked about the case was just how good it looks, and particularly how good it looks at the front end. I think Antec have done a great job in setting their mesh front of case apart from the other cases. And I think they've done it with this wave type pattern to the front mesh. And with the light shining off it, I think it looks absolutely stunning. The other things I like about this case is just how much hardware you can fit in it. And I think in a case of this size, it's particularly impressive that you can actually fit a 360 millimeter radiator at the top and that you can fit three times 140 millimeter fans at the front. I thought the build quality of the case was excellent throughout. It had really good airflow, and I like that the case comes with enough fans, so you're not gonna have to go out and buy any extra fans. The other really great feature that you've actually got a six pin addressable ARGB controller at the back of the case, and all that for the small price of £65 makes this case a real bargain. So this case obviously has an awful lot going for it, but I do think there are some areas where a few small changes could be made to make things even better. The first relates to the reverse fan that comes with the case. I, I think this is a great idea, but when we look at the temperatures, it doesn't actually make any difference to the temperatures. So I would much rather Antec didn't ship the case with this reverse fan and put the extra money to upgrading the fan at the rear to an ARGB fan. The second thing I would like to see added is a removable cover for the cutout at the front of the case. 
So if you're not going to install a radiator and fans there, it would be nice to have that hole covered up because it is possible to see some of the cables at the bottom of the case through that hole. For a similar reason, I would like to have seen rubber grommets used on the cutouts over to the right hand side of the motherboard. Again, it was still possible to see some of the extra cables running at the back of the case through the fairly large cutouts and some rubber grommets would hide all those cables at the back. The next very slight issue I had was with the Velcro cable straps. And I think it's great to see a case in this price point, including them. The only side problem I had that one side of these was yellow in color while the other side was black. And for whatever reason, the yellow side was showing from the front of the case. And when you looked through the gaps at the front, you could see the yellow Velcro straps. All I did was I removed these, turned them around and inserted them back in, and it looked much better from the front of the case. But I think having them black on both sides would be much better. The final thing that I think needs some improvement is the fan hub, and that's probably no surprise to you given it's come up a number of times in this review so far. But again, it's not that big a deal. You just don't have to use it and you can plug your fans directly into your motherboard. So I think you probably worked out by now. I was fairly impressed with this case and I can most definitely recommend you go out and get it. And particularly when you factor in the low price point, this case is offering some incredible value for money. So hopefully you found this review useful. If you were thinking of getting the case, it's helped you make your mind up. And if you've already made your mind up to get it, it'll give you an idea of how to build in the case. If you find the video useful, please hit the thumbs up button. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you in the next video.